Dr. Anurag Singh is the chief medical officer of Amazentis, a Swiss life company focused on discovering and developing next generation natural compounds, which target improvements in mitochondrial health. Dr. Singh has led the clinical development of urolithin A, a natural mitophagy activator at Amazentis, where he has spent seven years in research and clinical trials of the molecule. And with that, let me start the interview. Hello, Dr. Singh. You are the Chief Medical Officer of Amazentis, a Swiss life science company. So welcome to Modern Healthspan, and thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure is mine. Thank you, Richard. So, Dr. Singh, so Amazentis produces a purified form of urolithin A, right? I think it's called uh, Metopure. Yep. So can you give us a little background on urolithin mm -hmm. A? So yeah. some history of it and, and what led you to pick urolithin A as kind of the, mm -hmm. the supplement that you were going to focus on? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so when we started, uh, it's about 13 years of research behind uh, this molecule. And initially, uh, the company was formed with the vision sort of to bring the biotech approach to discovering new nutritional bioactives. Uh, and, and we focused on, on pomegranates initially because there is a lot of literature around pomegranates being very beneficial for health and being very rich in polyphenols. And so we started looking at polyphenols that are called as elegitanins. Uh, these are basically elagic acid and punicolagins. And so po pomegranates are not the only rich source. There are berries such as raspberries. There is walnuts such as pecans and, and walnuts that are rich in uh, these polyphenols. And so when we started studying these polyphenols, what became very clear to us, uh, you know, most of the, and we focused on, on the aging studies and, you know, looking at uh, both uh, cellular muscle and brain function, what was very clear to us uh, uh, that the health benefits were being derived by the gut microbiome digestion of these polyphenols and the release of a postbiotic that we now call as urolithin A. So postbiotics being, you know, beneficial molecules that are released by the gut microbiome. So the diet has the goodies, but then you need the microbiome to harness it. And, and, and so when we started studying pinocollagens versus uh, urolithin, what was very clear to us, it was not the polyphenol precursors, but the gut microbiome metabolite that was giving the health benefits. And that's how, you know, we built the science around urolithin A over the years. I, and I, I'm just, yeah, so I'd like to dive into a, li a little bit more on the, the gut microbiome piece yeah. later. So, but looking at urolithin A, so, so what's, once it's been made, so what are the mm -hmm. benefits that urolithin A yeah. provides to us? Yeah, so the first uh, clear benefits we started seeing was on human health span. So when uh, we were doing these studies, uh, these studies were all done in partnership with the Swiss Institute of Technology here in Lausanne called the EPFL and with uh, Professor Johan Ulrichs. Uh, and so he was putting them on, uh, on uh, C. elegans, which is a worm model used by you know, most laboratories around the world to study age, aging, the effect of age, you know, different molecules on aging. And what Johan found that he was extending the lifespan of these uh, worms by about 50%. And, and from there, we started giving it to rodents. And, and really, the, the, the rodents were running. It had much higher endurance by about 60%. But the key feature when we started looking at the muscles of these different animals and worms was really the impact on mitochondrial health. So this molecule is very unique in that it activates mitophagy. Now for, for, the list, for your listeners, mitophagy is really like a well-conserved uh, cellular recycling pathway, okay? So as we age, our cells accumulate uh, toxic waste, they accumulate free radicals, and, and with aging, this process slows down. And, and what happens, happens is because the cells can clear away the waste, the mitochondria become uh, unhealthy or dysfunctional. And so what this molecule really does is it revs up mitophagy. So, you know, the garbage machinery is much more efficient. And so you're cleaning waste, which basically allows mitochondrial uh, biogenesis down the road to happen and you get much healthy mitochondria. And that's really how uh, this molecule works is by boosting mitochondrial health via mitophagy. So in terms of um, encouraging mitophagy, you know, I, could you talk a little bit more about how it does that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, myto mitophagy means, uh, the word mitophagy comes from the, the word autophagy. And uh, autophagy is basically a process which means uh, self-eating of, of the cellular machine, you know, uh, 
parts and then recycling the cellular uh, parts to, to renew the, the different organelles, cellular organelles. Mitophagy means it's a very specific autophagy targeted towards mitochondria. So this molecule, what it does is it, it targets uh, typically the dysfunctional mitochondria. When the mitochondria are unhealthy, they put up certain proteins on their cell surface. And so this molecule, uh, when it's uh, in the circulation, it sees these mitochondria, these sort of dysfunctional mitochondria that have put this protein, sometimes it's a protein, I'm not gonna go into detail, but it's a protein called parkin, and there are other proteins and then it tags them for destruction. So these mitochondria then get, uh, these faulty mitochondria get taken up and destroyed and that gives you know the building blocks for newer mitochondria. That's how an essential mitophagy happens. Right, and so what, would the, what, what are the benefits that a person would see from this? So, uh, I mean, you talked about the mice running further, yep. so it, it helps with muscles. Yeah, so it, it has a very specific effect on, on uh, cellular health and boosting mitochondrial health, which translates to improved muscle strength and improved aerobic endurance. So these are, and we can talk about the different clinical studies we have now translated into. But typically, and this is a question I get a lot because uh, I, I'm trained as a medical doctor and people ask me, well, how do I pick up I have uh, poor mitochondrial health? And, and, and essence, you know, Poor mitochondrial health basically is a lack of energy, uh, getting fatigued easily. If you're exercising uh, uh, and as you age, you'll see that recovery from exercise takes longer than it took, you know, five, 10 years back. And so these are the kind of things that you pick up. And so what uh, urolitin A does is by boosting mitochondrial health, it's improving energy, it's uh, improving your resistance to fatigue. And of course, it's improving uh, your strength. And uh, yeah, typically these are the key features. So I hadn't thought about the murolithin A is going to encourage the bad, like mitochondria, to to go mm -hmm. away. Do you then need to do something to encourage the uh, the growth, mitogenesis, um, like you exercise or something? Yeah, so exercise typically is, is the best known example uh, that induces mitophagy. And so you, you, you're hitting the right uh, sort of lead in. So exercise is known to induce mitophagy. And by cleaning the waste, now you have a big space in the cell and, and you have the building blocks and that encourages uh, mitochondrial biogenesis. So the word we use is something called is mitohormosis. So there needs to be a constant balance between mitophagy and mitochondrial biogenesis. Urolitin A does both. So it, and the way it does is it, it does it in a cyclical fashion. So it induces mitophagy that then does allows uh, biogenesis to happen. And we have seen in our clinical studies where we have actually taken muscle biopsies after a four week intervention and we've actually published in uh, Nature Metabolism a few years back, you, you, see, you pick up uh, a signature of mitophagy early on but by about four weeks, what you see when you take these muscle biopsies and you do a genomic profiling and you look for the mitochondria in there, you're getting increases of PGC1 alpha, which is a classical uh, sort of marker of mitochondrial biogenesis. So yeah, typically it does both. Okay, so you just produce them and then they will automatically kind of build themselves back. Yeah. So you mentioned that uh, exercise causes mm -hmm. mitophagy and I believe mm -hmm. intermittent fasting does as well as well as well yeah, yeah. so should w would they be additive I mean should you take urolithin A and do those or is it either or yeah so we haven't done clinical studies yet uh, combining intermittent fasting with urolithin A uh, first uh, goal always in these studies is to tease the direct effect of urolithin A uh, we are running a study in uh, in elite athletes now who are exercising in a training camp and they're taking MitoPure or placebo. But we have done a number of studies that we have published in Nature Medicine uh, showing the effect of urolitin A is very similar to uh, caloric restriction, uh, which is basically intermittent fasting. And so you're inducing autophagy and mitophagy at similar levels with, with this molecule after, let's say, six weeks or eight weeks of intake in rodents. and and additive to exercise, if you give exercise regimen to the old rodents or young rodents, and you put uh, mitopure or urolitin A uh, into the diet, you get a much sustained and better effect than exercise alone. Right. Okay. So I get kind of additive. So one yeah. thought, so you said that the, the, it seems to make the muscles better because they can, the mice can run further. 
Now, the thing is, uh, the brain has lots of mitochondria as well, right? I, I mean, it, it definitely. So does it also help cognitively? Have you looked at that at all? Uh, we have not in human studies. Uh, our focus has been the this human skeletal muscle is the richest organ containing the highest amount of mitochondria. Not only does it consume the highest amount of energy, but the muscle also uh, produces the highest amount of energy. But then, of course, the, the obvious question is, what about other organs, as you're saying, that are rich in mitochondria, such as brain and human heart, or, yeah, the heart? Uh, and, and the answer lies that we've started looking at the preclinical level now, not at the clinical level. Uh, and there are other labs since our discovery, I guess, about uh, six years back. There are a lot of numerous labs around the world that have get, gotten funding to look at the brain. So the Buck Institute of Aging, for example, uh, a few years back, they got a $3 million grant to study the effect of this uh, gut metabolite on, on neuro and cognition effects. And they're showing, uh, I think they've published a paper, the NIH has published a paper showing that urolitin A is actually one of the most potent molecules that uh, it cleans up the waste in the neurons and helps uh, in, in neurodegeneration and decline of the cognitive function with aging. So yeah, there's a lot of promise, but again, research is made up of two words. Uh, I always say re and search, right? So you always need to keep searching and, and, and doing more studies. Uh, and right now we have proven that it works uh, via mitophagy and improving mitochondrial health and muscle. And, and I'm sure we'll start some thinking about heart and brain in the next series of clinical studies.